it's a pleasure to actually maybe introduce New York. And the first time I've had a chance to talk to him, Peter, as well, Jabril Peppers, yes, safety for the New York Giants. Welcome, man. Pleasure. Welcome to New York. Appreciate Welcome it. to the pleasure. Giants. Appreciate it. Appreciate you it. You know, trades happen in other sports all the time, but mm -hmm. it doesn't happen a lot in football. So w what's your feeling when you find out you're getting traded? Um, you know, it's a lot of mixed emotions. Um, you know, for me, it was, you know, a lot of excitement. And, you know, I was a little upset because, you know, I felt like I didn't really put forth, you know, my best performances. You know, I feel like if I played up to par of my potential and then they traded me, you know, it would have been, you know, easier to deal with. But, um, you know, if I'm going to get traded anywhere, why not right. come back home? you know prestigious franchise and uh you know start over make a new name for yourself is it a fight of looking at it as cleveland didn't want me or the giants wanted me yeah that's 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 what i was <laughs> going you know going back in between uh with but uh you know when i talked to you know ghetto man you know he said the deal doesn't happen without you so mm. you know that that definitely, you know, made me feel good. You know, you definitely want to be somewhere where you're wanted, you know, and, and, and guys want to coach you and, you know, things like that. So that definitely, you know, helped out a little bit. Well, you're you're squeezing into a, a, a large jersey and pair of cleats in the position you're filling um, with Landon Collins. Mm -hmm. First of all, what's your relationship like with Landon? And talk about filling um, those shoes. You know, I met him a couple times. Um, you know, I wouldn't say, like, you know, we boys or anything, but, you know, he's an Adidas guy, so I saw him at a couple events. Um, and, you know, I'm not really, you know, looking at it like, oh, I'm like I'm replacing somebody. You know, I'm going and do what I do. And, you know, that's play football and make plays. Um, and I ain't, it's no extra pressure or anything like that. Everybody keeps, you know, trying to put on me. Um, it's just football at the end of the day. Um, and by the end of the year, I'm going to let everything speak for itself. Who was your, who was your guy growing up? Who was your favorite safety to watch? Um, Rod Woodson and Sean, Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor always comes up. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, in this generation, yeah, he yeah, is an influence yeah, he, of nah, everybody. He's the guy. Yeah, he's the guy. Yeah. All right, tell us about this defense. A lot of changes, um, hoping for improvement. So what, do you, what has camp been like so far for the uh, It's been good, man. Um, you know, we had a lot of installs. Um, you know, some guys still trying to wrap their heads around it, you know me being one of those guys <laughs> um you know when you're playing so many different positions in the new system um you know there's a lot of similarities that you got to kind of mm -hmm. you know get away from old habits you know with old verbiage and you know how one coach might have wanted you to play this particular coverage another coach might want you to play it differently um so just trying to break out of that um you know gelling together with the guys we have a lot of versatile guys in various positions um and, you know, just to keep the quarterbacks guessing, different looks, coverages, blitzes. Um, so I like it, man. I, I definitely think we got the tools that we need. We got the players to, you know, do the job. It's just about execution. How much studying really does come into play when you start a new system with a new team? Oh, it's just like school. You know, you, 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 you got to study, you know, especially because it's football. So, you know, it can't be that much different. It's just different words. Um, might be a, a different front with the same coverage or the same coverage with a different front. So, you know, once you've been around enough football and you know enough football, um, you know, you don't really have to, like, put hours in at night. But, you know, definitely, you know, if you're not doing nothing, just go through it. Um, you know, we do a good job of, you know, getting in there in the classroom, going over it. Then we walk through it and then practice. So, you know, if you, if you don't have it by then, then maybe you should be one of those guys who put the hours in at night. Do but. you feel like you have it when preseason starts or is it, or by game one, is it, is it not until week one when you feel like you well, really have it? Well, down? it's different. You know, preseason, everything is very vanilla, right. very bland. You're not going to show anything, you know, because you still want to prepare for week one because the preseason is just guys who trying to make the team, tune up you know guys haven't been in live full speed bullets in a minute um but you know you don't really have the whole playbook in every game you know you might have certain things that's up each week right and then you pick and choose you know the new looks you want mm -hmm. but um for nothing's right, like week one no no right. so you 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 go through all of these things so you can have a idea of them you've gone through them already so it, it resonates when coach pulls it up week nine week ten because some of these coverages we're running we're probably not going to use you know the first couple of weeks you know and he, then all of a sudden you see and you go oh yeah, i haven't seen that yeah. for, for ten so, weeks. so now you got to go refresh go watch right, right. the film and then we pull out, out our back pockets you know for whatever team we think you know it can be most effective against and that's how they do it, man. So, you know, it's just summer camp and, you know, the, the training is always harder mentally because you, they're getting the whole thing in. But 
each week is by game plan. So, you know, it definitely slows down. You can play fast, no anxiety. You're not worried about, you know, what, what do you have to do here, what do you have to do there. You just go out there and play. So when you hear Julio Jones say, I don't need the preseason, I'm good, do you get that? Yeah, I get him. He proved himself. <laughs> right. He's arguably one of the best receivers in the game. So if they cut it down to two preseason games mm -hmm. or whatever, you'd you be fine with that? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, but what, what if they then told you it's going to be because they're doing 18 regular season games? It'd be the same difference. It's just two of me more now. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so that's, that, that's really all it is. All right, Jersey kid, who'd you root for growing up? Um, I was actually, you know, I wasn't really, you know, mm. too big into the, to the, to the NFL when okay. I was younger. Um, but, uh you know, I, I, I kind of liked everybody. You know, I, I, obviously, I'm a Jersey kid. I went, I was going to the Jets and the Giants mm -hmm. games. And, you know, I seen a couple of those, you know, good games when the Giants played the Cowboys and, you know, things like that. But uh, growing up, it was it was all college ball to me. Really? Yeah, it was all college. And yeah. who was your team? Um, well, or was it players? Reggie, Bush, Reggie Bush had me inf infatuated with uh, USC. And then after Reggie Bush, it was um, Patrick Peterson. Um and then kind of after that, I was kind of old enough to, you know, want to be the guy myself, so. Now, our producer, Andrew Gunling, mm -hmm. did some play-by-play -play of, of a game in high school. Yeah, he told me. Yeah, he, he told you about yeah. this 96-yard <laughs> interception yeah. return for I a think, touchdown? I think he's talking about the St. Peter's game, if I'm not sure, if I'm not mistaken. Was it the first play? Uh, it was the first drive, right. I think, yeah, first drive. Now, there's a couple of things. Interceptions, yep. that's something. Yep. Sacking the quarterback, that's another thing. Well, yep. What's... What's your highlight play? Would it be a pick six or a big uh, sack the quarterback, strip him? Like, what, what's your idea? Yeah, what's the play? biggest high you could yeah. get on the field? Um, I think as a defender, definitely some type of scoop score touchdown or interception touchdown that changes the game. You know, when the defense scores, you know, that team usually has an 80% chance of winning the game. Um, so I think that, you know, if you could make a play, on the ball and didn't put it in the end zone. I think as a defender, that's that's the best how you can. But get. where does that compare to either a season, a game-ending interception, mm -hmm. or a late in the game, game-ending stop on a drive? So it's fourth and four. You make the tackle and mm. stop them short. Because that has to be. <laughs> I mean, yeah, satisfying I mean, both too. both both are definitely satisfying. Um, but you know, I think you know, you know, guys like the newer newer age generation, you know. The, the the pick interception to end the game or the pick to end the game, you know, that's more alluring than, you know, just making a tackle to turn it over on downs. You know, but uh both both get the job done, both are exceptional plays, so you definitely should celebrate after both of them. All right, Jarrell Peppers joining us here on the Michael K show. Now once you start playing, you already know you're from Jersey, but yeah. when you start to see how loyal the fans are, yeah. are you gonna call Baker Mayfield and say, Hey, you know, we got loyal fans here too, man. <laughs> you know, big man, big, big has an interesting personality. Man, I love him to death. Um, what was it like to defend him in practice? Uh, you know, it was it, it was good. We we went at it a lot. You know, jawing at each other. Um, but you could tell instantly when he got in there that you know he just had it. Um, you know, he was still raw um, when he first you know when we first started practicing against him. You know, staring down looks and you know. You know, just making rookie, you know, quarterback mistakes. But as the the season went on, you know, you could tell he started coming into his own. But yeah, I might send him a little message or something, man. You know, our, <laughs> our, our friends are pretty yeah. good here too. Well, man. that's funny. You know, I'm 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 not a Giants fan. I'm a Redskins fan who lives in New York. Okay. And I, I oh, that's I just, terrible. I know it's trust me, <laughs> on so many levels. On so many levels, it's terrible. But I I, I saw it and I was like, ah, Baker's wrong on this yeah. one. This is a loyal yeah, fan base, man. Definitely, they definitely. have sat through over the last few years some games that have been pretty rough. Was it? Was one of the painful pieces, Cleveland is a town that is so in love with their football team. Mm -hmm. And by all accounts, it feels like mm -hmm. they're really starting to make the turn. Yep. Was there some sadness to maybe not get to be there? And I know you're excited about being a giant. Oh, yeah, definitely. But still, like, definitely. It, Cleveland's going to be a destination definitely. where people want to watch this year. Definitely. You know, just because, you know, I was there when we were down bad. You know, 0-16. Um, then to come back and, you know, win seven games, you know, I, I wanted to be part of the, you know, but at the end of the day, man, this is a business. How know, high I, was the high on a weekly win last year? Because it felt like a big um, win every week. Honestly, bro, it it was just like we honestly felt like 
we were supposed to be winning. So it it, it wasn't right. yeah. like, oh, my God, we won. You know, it was like, this is what we're supposed to have been doing. Yeah, you know what amazing. I'm saying? Right. So, so, Let's go. So, so it's like, yeah we, yeah, we were happy that, you know, we're winning, but it ain't it's, like you... We're doing, we're doing just it's amazing what we're doing. It's amazing what play. Like, uh, Greg Buttle, who I used to do the Jets pre and post with, he was on the Jets when they lost a the game like 54 to nothing to New England. Oh, wow. And he walked off the field like, we really thought we were going to win this. Like, <laughs> all, but the whole week you prepare and you psych yourself up that yeah. you're, you probably walk off the field like shocked. Yeah, right. Like, absolutely. This, this is not supposed to be absolutely. the way that it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, last one is you say you're growing up in Jersey. Yeah. So Eli gets drafted by the Giants. You're like nine. He starts playing at nine, <laughs> 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Right? You're probably yeah. watching him, seeing yeah. him on TV. Now, now, now he's a teammate. Is, is that strange? It's very strange. You know, we also have Antoine Bethea, too, who was, has been in the league since right, I was nine. Yeah. And I'm actually in the back end with him. So, <laughs> you know, just playing against Eli is just like, I remember watching this guy when I was in, you know, middle school, you know, growing up in high school. Now I'm competing against him in practice. Like, it got me feeling like I'm getting old, you know, <laughs> or he got the foul in the youth or something. But, you know, it's definitely a surreal feeling. Eli, a lot of people like to say that Eli's uh Eli's sort of swag is no swag. Like, is is Eli sneaky cool in the way I think he's a so. person? I think so. You know, and I've been watching him for a minute. I watch everybody who's, you know, got nine plus years in the league. Um, you know, he 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 he's all about his work. You know, he's a quiet, funny guy. You know, he's actually funny. I sat yeah, everyone the, says that. Yeah, I sat at the table with him. You know, eating lunch. You know, just trying to sit with different guys. He's actually a funny guy, cool personality. But when he's out there, man, he's. He has, like, this, like, silent, like, I know what I'm about to do to you. You don't know what's coming yet, about, like, kind of about him. Like, he just, you know, you can feel him when you're out there. He he won't say much. He won't do much. But you can definitely no. feel him when you're out there. Well, bro, welcome home, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. All right. It. Good luck. Yes, sir. Pleasure. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, man. You.